When you were a child, what did you dream you would become? I wanted to be a drummer. And for me growing up, drumming was a great activity. I learned all about hard work, met some great friends, and made some good memories. But I never considered it to be a career option. And I had a bunch of excuses why. I wasn't good enough, I wouldn't pay enough, it just wasn't a logical career choice. So what about you? I bet we all have a dream that we didn't pursue. I had another dream, too, though. I wanted to be an inventor. And in a way, I do get to live that out today as an engineer. My career has given me the opportunity to use some of the latest innovations and in technologies. And along this path, I've come to believe that the future exists where men and women are going to be free to pursue their creative passions in a way that's going to redefine how we see ourselves as humans. Now, to help tell the story of how we get there and how I think we can better approach our personal goals, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. Caton, would you join me, please? <laughs> hey, buddy, it's great to see you. I've got a few people here I'd like you to meet. Everyone, would you say hello to Caton? <laughs> now, Caton, last time I saw you, I thought you were a bit taller. <laughs> I'm glad to see that you're still just as skinny as I am. <laughs> now, as you can see, Caton is joining us today via a telepresence robot. He's actually controlling this from his desk about 30 miles from here. And this is a relatively simple technology, and yet it's remarkably powerful. I've had the chance to use it in a business setting, and I can tell you it has a future there. But listen to this. There are already numerous examples of children around the world using devices just like this to attend school. These are children that are undergoing cancer treatments. They're recovering from organ transplants. They're medically unable to be there in person. And these devices have given them a way to transcend space. They can maintain social contacts with their friends and teachers and classmates. It's giving them a sense of normalcy during a very crucial time in their lives. And that is an incredibly powerful technology. Now, Caton, I want to thank you for demonstrating it for us today. But I'm going to ask you to get back to your family now. If you up here, no one's going to pay attention to me. <laughs> See ya. Watch out for that wall. <laughs> so this device, it's so powerful and yet so simple. So why wasn't it invented 30 years ago? Well, the answer is because it couldn't be. The basic building blocks hadn't yet evolved to the point where it was possible. Today, it's pretty simple. It's just an iPad riding a Segway. But think about the steps that got us there. It really starts with the invention of the wheel, but it includes things like gears, motors, bearings, sensors, computer hardware, screen technology, internet access, programming. The list could go on and on, but each of these step-by-step -step evolutions were required to make this possible. It doesn't even matter if someone thought of it 30 years ago. It just wasn't going to occur as an overnight leap. Now, the reason I demonstrate it is because I think our personal growth works best when we approach it in a similar manner. We all have goals and dreams we're trying to achieve, and it's easy to get caught up thinking you just need a breakthrough moment to reach that goal. But the reality is, those who are successful at reaching their goals have built on consistent habits of hard work and have improved those habits over a long, long period of time. And I think that's the best approach for all areas of our lives, whether it's our finances and investing goals, our career growth, or hobbies like arts and music, or health and fitness goals. So I want to give you a bit of a personal example. Take a look at this photo. I'm sure you've all guessed that is a photo of my little brother. Okay. So I'm sensing a bit of skepticism, so <laughs> let me help you guys out here. <laughs> See the resemblance now? Okay, well, you'll have to take my word for it. This is a photo of my younger brother. And the reason I show you the photo is because at one time, he and I had a very similar body type. That was back when we were teenagers. I still have that body type today. And I can tell you that to change from my body type to that of a power lifter, doesn't occur overnight. In the case of my brother, I watched him practice a very strict diet and workout routine 
for over a decade. And that routine looks very different today than it did when he started. It wasn't a perfect plan from the start, but he made it a consistent habit, and he improved on that habit over time. I suspect it's still not a perfect plan. And if he would look back on today, 10 years from now, he's going to see that it's going to continue to grow and evolve. So that's what's required for such a drastic transformation. It's a consistent habit of hard work continually improving over a long, long period of time. So that makes sense for the average person, but what about a naturally gifted world-class athlete? Well, during the recent Rio Olympics, I was watching an interview with swimmer Katie Ledecky. She had just won a gold medal. She was crushing world records, so naturally they wanted to know what was her secret. I loved the response she gave. She said, the secret is, there is no secret. I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and it's just putting in the work. And that's a pretty brilliant response if you think about it. And I'm not even sure if she realized it, but I think she told us the secret. She said, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So the secret is, enjoy what you do. Otherwise, putting in that hard work, day after day, month after month, year after year, is going to be torture and probably impossible. There are no shortcuts. You have to put in the work. And that's actually a good thing. Now, to explain why it's a good thing, I want to shift gears back to technology again. Something that I'm involved in is automated manufacturing. And I actually think this has the capability to change the world for the better. I see a future where we spend less time working and more time with our friends, family, and loved ones. But what if that future came tomorrow? We would wake up to millions of people unemployed overnight, and our society wouldn't be able to adapt to that sudden change. Or let's think about solar panels for a minute. Some experts have said that within 30 years' time, solar power is going to be so affordable that it's going to provide the world's power at a fraction of today's cost. And that sounds wonderful. But if that occurred tomorrow, we would see energy, utility, and oil companies collapsing overnight, many people unemployed, and negative economic impacts that would affect us all. So while these technological advancements are positive, we need to move in small steps to get there. Society needs to be able to evolve and adapt in turn. And the same goes for our personal growth. Let's go back to powerlifting again. What if I woke up tomorrow and I had this same body that I have today, but suddenly I could bench press 400 pounds? Now, if my muscles could somehow push that weight, would my joints, ligaments, tendons, and supporting functions be ready to handle the stresses and the forces they would see? Well, let's suppose once that my body did miraculously grow overnight. I woke up tomorrow fully capable of handling the forces and pushing the weight. Now is my heart ready to carry around the extra body weight I'm going to have on a daily basis? So we need to grow and evolve in a step-by-step -step manner. It allows our supporting functions, our building blocks, to also grow and evolve. Now eventually, as individuals, we will no longer evolve and grow because our lives are finite. But technology will continue to evolve long after we're gone. And I think there's a lesson we can take from it. Eventually, I see technology and automation evolving to the point where humans will need to provide very little labor to create the things we're going to consume on a daily basis. Our basic needs should be met with abundant supply, and that's going to change the way people choose to spend their time each day. Humans of the future should be free to pursue their creative passions. We should see a renewed interest in volunteerism, a rebirth in arts and music. It's going to change the way humans see themselves and their accomplishments. So here's what I have for us today. Let's not take ourselves and our accomplishments too seriously. It's possible that people of the future are going to look back on the way we spent our time and see it as somewhat trivial. They may have an automated solution for what we do or an artificial intelligence making the decisions we make. But the other reason, and I alluded to this earlier, is because advancements occur when the time is right, when the building blocks have evolved to make them possible. And history has shown us that time and again. Think of the major discoveries of our time. There have been multiple people coming to the same conclusion at the same point in time. So what that means is these advances, these discoveries, are really about when. They're not about who. They're going to occur with or without any one of us. Now, that's a bit of a sobering thought. I know it is for a guy that wanted to be an inventor. But here's the positive I see. 
We each do have the opportunity to make a unique impact on the world. We each have people that we're connected to, people that we interact with, maybe just once, maybe on a daily basis. But we can choose to have meaningful, positive interactions with the people we come in contact to. Those interactions could change their day. Those interactions could fill a void that's going to change their life. So let's not miss out on that opportunity. You may be in a unique position to change someone's life. Now, I love talking and thinking about the future, but let's not wait for the future. Let's rekindle our childhood dreams and pursue our passions by deciding on our goals and making a plan to move in steps towards reaching those goals. Remember, your plan doesn't have to be perfect from the start. You just have to start. Now, perhaps I'm overcomplicating this, so I want to leave you with the words of someone whose first steps I got to witness. And I watched his walking steps turn into running steps, and now he jumps off and across everything in our house that he can find. So these are the words my six-year-old son said to me, and I think they simplify the message in a way that only a child can. He said to me, Dad, if you really wanted to be an inventor, just go invent. Thank you. <laughs>